Perfect Are you recording. Screen, um, can you see it on the? By sh I can. Oh. Someone would have to mirror me. You wanna? If someone wants to, can you mirror? Or I can. it's not working on my computer. So, okay. but <clears throat> the summer X officially goes on until December one. The apprenticeship till December twenty second. So, we're, and the goal of the apprenticeship and all this was to move forward on a house quite a bit, uh, thinking about funding models for open hardware. So that's still the game to solve. Uh, still, I'm confident as ever that the house can do it. Uh, actually, you know, thinking about projects like Ben's, I mean, not Ben, but like Regen. Man, that's such a, if we could get in on that for, as a funding mechanism too. But basically what open source hardware has to do is discover some method where uh, there's a way to fund projects for regeneration and in a replicable way. So that's, my thinking on the whole project, like overall, is exactly that. It's, it's the global village construction set approach where modularity, scalability, teachability, replicability are high on a list. And therefore, anybody who wants to take on a different path in life, they can do that. And therefore, that means absolutely business models, revenue models that are worked out that we can present to anybody and teach them. So you don't have to take the standard track. I mean, based on my own experience, I wanted to do something good out of out of uh, grad school. I found myself terribly disappointed at that, right? So, so that's the kind of pickle that a lot of people find themselves in, and that's a, that's the problem, you know. Based on my experience, I'm trying to solve for others as well. Uh, so, if you want to do something different, like okay, so my my standard path would have been being a professor or like being in a cubicle somewhere, of course. Uh, and now it's like. We want to do better. We want to give more diversity and opportunity. And eventually that means what we want to set up here is, is like a four-year uh, immersion program where after that you can be pretty much guaranteed, okay, here's a way to make a living doing regenerative open source work. Uh, so, hmm? just, just something that arises for me. Um, yeah. There's so many good ideas. There's so many good layers of value here. And like... It's almost like there's there's enough that it's like one ends up tripping over. Like, do we go in that way? Do we go in that way? And what comes down for me is I go like you need you need the monkey ball. You need the like um, you need that piece that is the first bit that you can grab hold of. There's like a monkey ball in a huge ship, right? It's this little ball of rope that's connected to a bigger rope that's connected to a bigger rope that's connected to the big chain. And the monkey ball in this, to me, would be what is the smallest value proposition that can be set up and become a functional unit by itself? And I think that that is maybe the most important thing to, to like really capitalize because um, at that level then that actually creates a small piece of ground one can stand on it and it gives it lowers the bar of accessibility right mm -hmm. yeah is this connected on the just, TV just thinking that thinking that who has an answer for that massively too big Mm -hmm. it's going uh, to be more on the level like, of 3d printer yeah, or something that's your problem small that like Literally anybody can start it wherever yeah. they are with whatever resources they have. Want to try again? Thoughts, feelings? Mm -hmm. You don't get to centralize the economic power that way. You need a certain level of centralization in order to go radically dispersive. We've been through many discussions on on say that you know the 3D printers we were go going at before right before COVID hit and Mm -hmm. That got shut down, and we started to think, okay, well, what, what does really make a difference? Well, those 3D printers, the small ones, don't make a difference uh, at that level. Uh, housing is a much bigger market, so we, we went to, to that. But that was, uh, like, say on an inner team, like over the last two years, we, we came up with housing as the best thing. So right now, you know, you might see a lot of noise here, but everything right now is, the, is that thing up there. That thing that's rapidly deployable. 500 hour build, uh, 50k in materials, to, and then you sell one, and you can sell one for as little as 100k. That's focused enough. It's a big project. It's a house. It's huge. But 
There's no mystery in it. It's about solving for collaboration. Mm -hmm. So short of that, it's like, I don't see anything. We, you know, we've been at it for a bunch of time, but in terms of scalability, uh, you can say the market is definitely huge there. The other things like the printer, which we're doing right now, it, the specific intent is construction materials. Like if we can lower the cost, therefore revenue potential is better on a, on a house and so forth. So that's kind of the thinking, but yeah. But, but you don't you'd have to come like up with a... Identifying like, like, I don't know, top 20, 30, 50 things that one can print on that printer that actually like are going to be <coughs> value chains anywhere Absolutely. that you set them up. I would say that, however, from a business strategy perspective, the amount of time to develop such an enterprise would be quite comparable to housing versus uh, cordless drill or something or ball bearings you print or this or that that you can print. That would be a billion dollar market in itself but it's still all about that business development. But the thing we're, we're going by here is kind of like the Diamandis style uh, seven Ds of disruption kind of deal where the first thing you got to start with is a big, hairy, audacious goal, which then allows people to contribute to it. Because with the house, everyone wants to contribute to it. With other projects like the cordless drill, and we've seen it. It's like, oh yeah, cool, but I ain't going to do that is what I need a cordless drill for. So, so house is... a universally acceptable kind of a thing and it's also goes by the principle that 10x is easier than 2x so that's the kind of thinking trying to think about it in an exponential way going at it you know the long-term development that leads you to to explosion so that's that's kind of where where we're doing it but I mean if if you could propose something that shows oh okay this is uh, I mean the concept is good and it's sound from the surface, but I think when, once you get into practice and consider longer term goals, I, I'm don't just see looking it. at like I mean I just have perused really lightly like things that are out there open source like I don't know like there's a a four piece angle clamp for doing joinery it uses one bolt like that's pretty we could you easily print that on on our size printer and like one of those clamps, I don't know what it's worth, but like $15 or something, $20 maybe. Um, like, I suppose I particularly come from developing world perspective. Like that is revolutionary. That's absolute life-changing income for someone who can go pick that plastic up on the beach and turn it into like not only that, they then have other tools so they can do other better quality things. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah, there's a certain trade-off when when you're trying to to provide the, the modular tools to make them, the mm -hmm. platform from which you can do mm -hmm. everything else, yeah. and then develop the, the use cases for that mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. In a sense, what comes first is the tool to be able to make those tools. Yeah. Of course. Totally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking about what you said with the tractor. I mean, I also have this in the back of my mind with the, the tractor. I mean, if you had this in a development country uh, and maybe have a small shop going with five or ten people, this could be also a huge, huge difference. You yeah. have a certain community around that, maybe mm -hmm. with whatever X tractors and uh, then a small shop that does the repair and the building. So the question, so the or question is to different. show me the the budget and development time yeah. and all that around the a successful enterprise that does that mm -hmm. and compare it to a house I would actually venture to say that a house is actually shorter shorter time to market probably yeah 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 and that's why we're picking it and oh, um, that's fair can for, I for your case but I'm um, yeah I was just thinking about other OSD like um, enterprises or, or large small-scale jobs that could pop up well right now I mean that's the dilemma we're facing here it's like we've got all this info online and so forth <coughs> but the the learning curve or the barriers to entry are significant because anything that we do here it requires a whole bunch of layers of knowledge to build upon each other so just I mean just to give you you might have heard a story but for, for the CEB press you know 2008 first got the industrial grade version of that press in like 10 block a minute and I thought oh man this is gonna change the world how many businesses are there running it right now zero so that's the thing it's like you gotta get people more help to do it and it may not be as easy as it looks.
-hmm. For me, I can do it, but the, 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 that's why the number one priority for me right now, apprenticeship and training. We're, we're getting involved with a GI Bill, the apprenticeship model there, where next step would be like 12 clusters of 12 people, first cohort of 12, mm -hmm. from a pool of like hundreds that are going to apply. So talking about people that we're selecting for, for grit and, and uh, some, somewhat of a vision to, to make um. this happen. And, and a longer program, like like yeah. here we tried the six month apprenticeship. It's got to be like two years plus. Yeah, um, I also just I from my understanding, basically what makes I get the modularity of the house, um, and I get that what makes it like an eco home is basically the the like alternative energy systems and like the smart like inner systems of the thing um you chose to do like panels like that because um just ease of access to materials or both industrial and diy grade okay yeah and doable in both contexts of course yeah you can build it up because i just think like to, to i just think how uh, cheap giving the modules um, i can order like ready-made sit panels with with like insulation already in them, that yep. they're like the really high quality, super light, um, and really, really cheap. Um, just curious. No, you can't. Hmm? No, you can't. Not at this price point. Um, It'll be twice, twice, two x. Yeah. I well, mean, show me the numbers. Yeah, I don't know the all. <laughs> I mean, we studied some so of it, but I mean, the, the conclusion was not not SIPs, okay. and it's also a little hard to get the ones that are four by eight. So n then we have to. It's not a standard thing. It's something you'd have to go to a specialized relationship, which is something to develop. Yeah. But if you have to develop specialized relationships like that, that beats the concept that you can go to any Home Depot or any yeah, lumberjack we'll right kind of there. a deal. Yeah. <clears throat> so maximum distributability uh, concept. Yeah. Yeah. There's uh, there's a lot of detail in there. Uh, to me, the most valuable is it's the seed concept that you can start with a small home that you don't get into debt for. That's the idea, and just building smaller homes as a viable model. Yeah. That's that's the basic thing. I mean, still stands uh, stronger than ever as a value proposition. We got to deliver on it. That's that's the thing. And so just just to be clear, because you know originally, you know the strategic mission of OSC, I, I thought on some level was to provide uh, the layman, so to speak, with the means to uh, be able to produce, you know, a civilization using, you know, to maybe for internal consumption. But I'm hearing that that it's uh, perhaps also on top of that, using that those tools and machinery, maybe other things to create a viable economic model that's sustainable for you as well. So you don't have to worry about, you know, be, being out in the matrix. So, yeah, that, I mean, I never, I never considered the CV press when I thought about like, you know, and I emailed like how much does it cost, of, you know, for a kit as using it for making money. Um, although, you know, as soon as I told my cousin I was here to, um, you know, build a tractor, the first thing he says, well, you know, there's, um, you know, plenty of opportunities if you have tractors to help people clear land, blah, 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 make, you know, whole lots of money. I know in construction, um, believe it or not, like I had a resident, you know, a residential renovation business, and I know a lot of the barriers of entry into commercial, you know, is, is the machinery, right? If you were able to have tractors or, you know, similar um, machines, mm -hmm. um, you could potentially, you know, rent them out or sell them probably a lot cheaper than what's out there. I don't know the profit difference between the CT government and the tractor or other vehicles for that matter. Um, yeah. But um, I, I will say, um, you know, uh, from a, when you talk about production stuff, I don't know how easy it is to put um, like a, a conveyor belt or anything like that onto the, um, the 3D printers, you know, that, that, that we're building and designing. But um, since I've been here, I've seen some conveyor belt style, you know, printers that are being used, especially with, you know, in volume for, you know, revenue generation um, that can, you know, print the long wood stuff that you're talking, I mean, the, you know, the plastic uh, lumber, so to speak, um, with a very small XY. Um, with you've so, sorry, you've seen stuff that can do it? Oh, yeah, yeah. Such yeah. as? Um, I mean, for a thousand dollars, you know, 
you know, there's something right now from Creality called the uh, CR30 that um, is printing a 20 foot I beam, you know, and people are, you know, it's changing how people are, are thinking about approaching 3D printing in terms of using it for fabrication. These guys have them on a shop. I mean, they have them on a the wall, mm -hmm. just printing like, you know, like six right there, 24 seven, just continuously printing, yeah. you know, yeah. and, and, and things like that. So, you know, for me, even thinking about how I want to go about building the community and housing structure, like I'm, I'm starting to think, like, is it possible to, to build plastic forms to pour concrete with these things? And you could almost design a house and literally just get on the top and pour whatever you want inside and have your windows, doors, all the, everything where it's supposed to be done, you know? Yeah, that's a possibility. You can do, think about building blocks that are forms for that CR30, great, but I'm not paying a thousand dollars for one of those it's, if it's not recycled plastic. There is no re recycled plastic machines that can do it effectively right now that are open source. What do you mean Nor is there plastic? any. Oh, you mean I can use recycled plastic as, okay. a, as a filament type? So, what are we solving for with. So, the, the question becomes what is, is the that, value proposition of these two things? The large 3D printer. Uh, that it can't use. Filament maker and shredder. Does not exist. Uh, shredder exists in the open source. It's uh, 5,000 bucks can do much better for like 10x at that point we can do like 10x the productivity uh, filament maker they somewhat exist but nothing exists that that actually works from scrap grade plastic that's been shredded and there is no open source high temperature 3d printers that allow you to print outside of like one or two plastics that are printable like the CR30 yeah you can do it in PLA uh, but I can't afford a, you know, the two thousand dollars per one panel that it would cost if you b bought plastic off the shelf. So what we're solving for is drastic cost reduction to the point of a few pennies per pound, mm -hmm. not twenty dollars per pound. So th like thousand x. And just changing about. the hot end or the, the extruder on that to like a super volcano wouldn't allow you. Which to we can those. do. By the oh. way, that was going to bring up. That's yeah. one of the things we can do right now because we've got that in stock. But so is that those the are limiting factor basically? Which the nozzle type? No, that's like, easy. Why, that part no, is but, easy. But why is it that one cannot use just recycled plastic in it? Uh, right. Take this. Yeah. You're not gonna print it. It's not printable. It's yeah. polyethylene. Yeah. It'll warp and and delaminate. Yeah. You need a high temperature chamber. So it's high, temperature high temperature machines temperature chamber do not and, exist. Mm -hmm. yeah. The lowest cost one is gonna be. Uh, few tens of thousands but that's like for small scale and not even high temperature the mm -hmm. the ones that actually go up into the hundreds like close to the hundred fifty or so you're talking hundreds of thousands of dollars that's the problem statement we're solving for if we solve that you have distributed plastic manufacturing a trillion dollar proposition distributed among thousands if not millions of economic agents throughout the world that's a much bigger proposition than than uh, so so first of all we're talking about actually solving taking a look at what's a big problem and and can we actually even tackle it but by starting with a big problem there's plenty of people working on other stuff we'd like to start at the top because we can get everybody to collaborate that's the assumption and that's not true yet because who's here we're not there yet to because one of the biggest things is people understanding the potential or the feasibility of all this stuff, which which we're busy kind of developing milestones here and there, on uh, all the items that we're talking about. And when you say but, uh, power magnetic is the heat chamber, are you talking about the enclosure now? Let's yes. Say, okay. Yes, enclosure with no n no of the none of the sensitive components inside that chamber. That's not a true high temperature printer if the the sensitive components are in there because they'll you can only go so high up. Here we're keeping everything but metal inside the heated enclosure. So it's metal and insulation and the heater elements inside the enclosure. Everything else, any electronics, any belts, rubber, plastic is outside. Mm -hmm. yeah. Would you yeah. have the material to build the enclosure? Oh, well, yeah. yeah. That's what I'm trying to understand. No, no, but you got to take a look at what kind it is. It's like, you can't just put a shroud around the printer and well, call it I think enclosure. it's a polycarbonate. Um, uh, enclosure that they make for it. Um, CR30? Yeah, so PLT. let's PLT? CR30 enclosure. Do you know off I the top of your head? I an that C axis is going to hit the wall eventually. Well, well, it depends. I mean, it, well, I mean, this? Belt is about. There's other things that they, that they uh, put underneath it. 
Um, so this is not what we're out. talking about. Yeah, that's the CR10, and he's talking about CR30 that has an infinite C axis. But if you're printing with a conveyor belt and you keep an enclosure, I mean, yeah, you, it, you it, would it, like to let the part out without the heat. Do going. you know off the top of your head? Well, they're, I mean, um, it's a new per concept. square they're foot. addressing that through several um, uh, like wall uh, construction ways. for the seat home with insulation. The, the biggest issue. Is Sorry, say it again. Do you know per like square a, foot the yeah, cost of the seat house um, like by a for wall so construction so if you're in um, with it's including it's insulation? With it's just nice. itself. I mean, we have those numbers, yeah. but the overall, yeah. it's it's a hundred k. Well, no, it's fifty k materials. I'm looking for that number. For built or labor with labor or not? Mm, I would say with labor, probably. Yeah, with labor, the construction of it and everything. And why why is that particular aspect I'm, so important? I'm just looking at like like what a Raycor panel is, cost wise. Well, I can tell you the panel panel cost is going to be one hundred fifty dollars for four by four by nine. For a four by nine. Yeah. Okay. How many square feet is that? That's. You can no, say there's four. forty-eight, twenty-four of them. So divide uh, five hundred by twenty-four, and that is like twenty. It's twenty square. Twenty square 24 feet. Twenty-four square feet per panel. No, twenty per panel. Something like that. Okay. What's the numbers anywhere else? Um, and then you have to consider that. It also may include the exterior. Uh, that's including cost of build. Cost that's of just materials. Of, that's okay. just, materials. just materials. But okay. the house, when you start with that, twenty percent are walls. So you got to consider the other eighty percent. Okay. So. So whatever whatever we've got, I mean, look at. Uh, I mean inform me if you have a specific link but if there's an enclosure it could be an enclosure where it's you might be able to do ABS it's a little hotter it's not the high temp thing where you can actually keep things over 100 C for an extended period of time yeah so that'll be the difference those but that's the critical thing you have to understand that there's a very specific thing that once you reach that level um, and you have to observe that well that's not it but it's hard to notice unless you study this you can't really notice which is which but there is a value proposition let's just say that and, and please inform me otherwise nobody has solved um, the idea of taking trash plastic and turning it into 3d prints the closest is uh, precious plastic but they're not doing 3d printing they're just doing injection molding and other things and pressing Mm -hmm. um, they have not chosen the 3D printer out, which is a dead end right there. You can't do any significant geometries outside of a 3D printer. The pr 3D printer allows you to do your honeycomb structures and all this flexibility of print that would cost you millions of dollars to implement in others, and most of it is impossible with extrusion. So, mold, right? extrusion or molds. Molds have conf confinement, like restrictions on the kind of geometry you can print. So, there's it's like there's no comparison and you can see that by the amount of garbage that like you know take a picture of some favela and tell me how much garbage there is the solution would be if that was clean because people are using that to make money right. everybody's scavenging to pick it up and so if you ask goods. Yeah. so if you, you tell you ask me that question i'm going to say well what's happening on there well obviously this has not gotten to the point which it needs to get to actually solve real problems there, what is the shortcoming? Well, I told you a few of those shortcomings. You can't print with most plastics, and uh, you just can't print with most plastics. And how that equipment that? does not. High temperature chambers, yep. open source uh, filament makers that actually work. There are no open source filament that makers really that well. actually work. Okay. There's a lot of prototypes. There's a lot of things that work from pellets, very finely graded, high yeah, quality materials. Super down. Yeah. When you talk about printing sure. with trash, sure. it doesn't exist. That's a problem we're trying to solve for. So that's that's the idea behind the, yeah. these two things here, plastic shredder and filament maker. Mm -hmm. I mean, we did that. That's ABS. Relatively easy. Uh, yeah. Small extruder. Uh, we can scale that up and, and make it happen with any plastic. For plastics that are maybe... Well, we don't have much experience with it, so I can't tell you what it takes. That was not from, from regrind. That was just from pellets using a, a small extruder because of the high quality of the pellets it works but once you get into irregular dirt in there all kinds of stuff you got to pay attention to more things mm -hmm.
And so even a simple thing as a regrind shredder does not exist. You can you can Google filament maker. You can buy one, 500 bucks, 1,000 bucks here and there. None of them work on trash. Mm -hmm. It's a missing link. Got to have super clean, tiny. Pieces yeah, which yeah. which doesn't count. Well, it gets you to a dollar a pound in filament cost because that's how much you can buy a Gaylord of pellets from China. Mm -hmm. But then you go 10x further or 100x further when you get that bale from your recycling center yep. and turn it turn it into regrind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. Finished filament, ten dollars a kilo. Pellets, dollar a kilo. Regrind, a cent a kilo or ten cents a kilo. So there's a thousand x difference. That's why I'm saying that panel was going to be two thousand dollars for our house. <coughs> yes, you can do that. CR10 can do that, uh, but that's not practical. So we're trying to solve for real problems here. Is the deal? So you feel that yeah. you have. Um, solve the design flaws in creating um, there are no design flaws okay. they're not just not doing it okay so yeah. <laughs> is there or maybe they don't have the so you think that we there's not any hurdles it's we, just we there's no it. okay it's called one percent inspiration 99 percent perspiration okay it's the old thing let's go perspire man so on that note, <laughs> like, done deal. I guess two questions on that note for like reproducibility. Is there a standard ratio between like the um, the size uh, print volume, a bed that you want, to the frame size, and then for that matter, uh, a way to scale that out with uh, a heat chain? Because I haven't seen any of the closure. I don't know if there are any around, but like, is that just a matter of you know taking this this cube design and uh, you know keeping the electronics on the outside and having again some some way of in our case the the practical consideration is if you use the kind of geometry we use like a cube I like a cube style yeah um, yeah you have the enclosed area because you have to the strategy we're using is a super dumb you just got a <laughs> coffee cup with a plate on top yeah. sliding over it that's the concept the frame has to be double it the has size to be it has to be triple the size of the triple, okay, so yeah. we can get two by two foot print bed six foot tall out of that which is in the hundreds of thousands of dollars cost range from the industry that is expensive Are we gonna nobody's do doing it two by two just saying uh, yeah two by uh, two by two feet by six feet oh, yeah, yeah. that's the proposition right Doing yeah, the, the, the that we can do uh, starting today. We can build that heat chamber. We can use four by four, four foot wide trim coil. Put a four foot wide around it. You have to do two slits for the verticals for the bed bed axes, so that the and do a wiper probably of the, the carbon fiber blanket or something, so that you kind of close that area in there, so you keep the temperature in. And the top is all enclosed. We can use even polycarbonate. Attach it to the bottom underside of the extruder. That's the concept. It's very simple. It just needs to be done. And nobody is building like what we're doing. Where, where is somebody building that kind of scale machine? Not a lot of people. So the idea is that most people just don't even start at the, at the larger picture. Uh, that's been my critique. Like, I, I thought that, I mean, RepRap transformed the world. It created the entire 3D printer industry that exists today, like the desktop 3D printing industry. That's amazing. At the same time, that n there's not. Uh, like maybe one or even not even one product like you mentioned print this clamp so maybe not even one single product out there that you can make money with because when somebody does it they make it proprietary or whatever or they just don't think that way most people are playing with it this stuff so that potential is huge it's trillions Plast there's plastic there's metal there's rock there's biomass so plastic is like a quarter of the hundred trillion dollar economy material economy or more okay. like 20 trillion material economy it's most of service and how, how easy is it to create a, like a, a open source hot end or something we already have it open source we designed and built this hot end this thing and, and what's open source it's, it's any temperature any temperature so you can go up to 500 so not this one you have to use yeah. different materials you'd have to go to to Instead of aluminum, you have to change the blocks to bronze or uh, brass. 
which is higher temperature. Aluminum starts getting soft at around 300 or 400. So we've got it, man. So it's already so, here. So, so the electronics Correct. or electronics will like, uh, and, you know, for, for instance, I saw the, the, the pricing was way off, so I don't know what it really cost, right? But I saw something recently that has a 480C sure. hot in, you know, whatever. Not a problem. Is, that's something, just, just get the right not, materials. That's not a problem, no. Okay. I found a really interesting thing I'm, I'm submitting in the chat here. Maybe you can pull it up. Hot dog, what is it? It's a <laughs> PETG filament maker that might be harder to scale than uh, what we're proposing to do, but it circumvents the whole uh, ripping apart the filament stage and just cuts it up into a band, uh, um, a flat piece of the PETG bottles, and then yeah. that through an extruder that makes it into a round filament. Oh, cool. Oh, that's such a... And this video, was, this was released yesterday, <laughs> this video. Oh, that's pretty cool. That's um, cool. Is it open source? No, he's selling it for $400. But if we can figure oh, out the folding mechanism, where, where the piece of plastic cool. goes in and it comes into a tube, that's really interesting. Well, so that's, that's a very cool thing, Man, but think about the way. practicality of this. Yeah, you can print things that are the weight of a bottle, but you'd have to find out the mechanism to load a thousand bottles and yeah. Yeah, if you can, if you can slice weld it. it. If and you can slice it first and then yeah. weld it together to the bands, then you can scale it. But think about just the, the labor, like you'd need a robotic arm to put those bottles on there if you're starting from your bottles and things like that. So it's cool. Uh, yeah. Nice idea. Well, I just found it. It's interesting to pull up. Yeah, sure. That kind of stuff, like the road to take, but this is one way of yeah. getting past the. Ah, it doesn't do the tip. Look at that when you get. PTG, you can print with, yes, yeah, indeed. Yeah, if you weld two bands together, you can keep on doing it. Yeah, so you could do, yeah, but the infrastructure to get, you know, the process no, no, engineering no, 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 for that no, 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 whole no. thing. Uh, that's what I'm saying. It's like what we can do is much easier. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Uh, there's a thousand ways to do it, and then you look for the one that's the super simplest. Um, that's a neat idea, and that's what that's like what plastic is. Like if you think about steel, well, steel does that too. That's called like hot rolling. But if you have a much higher temperature, you can do that to steel. So plastic is actually a good example of how the heat gun works magic and gets you the feeling of how you can actually get to steel if you can handle the much higher temperatures. But the same applies. I, I guess that for me the the model with plastic is that that's quite encouraging because that shows me that oh yes if you have now I understand the process of how you would rework steel you know you have to have higher temperature and metal rollers but same concept you still have to melt things together yeah yeah like that's the induction furnace stuff and all that here we got heat guns that go to like 400 C that's all but <laughs> anyways uh, so yeah because I know a uh, precious plastic they, uh, they basically buy a specific type of plastic. So they, they don't just grind everything and then put it in the mold. And uh, right. so they're even using mold. Uh, so, uh, so it's uh, much easier. So what is our proposition in, in relationship with the type of plastic that we that, That's like a question that we uh, What's our value proposition over their molds? Which plastics could we like, potentially yeah, use? Yeah, which plastic could we potentially use? And if you know anything about like ratio or... Uh, Formulas, so there's like thousands of plastics and they could vary by as little as like the chirality or order of molecules, all of this. Uh, there's unlimited number of plastics. And uh, the question here is, when you print them, are you able to keep the temperature up to where it's near their melting point in a high temperature chamber so that they don't delaminate and you can actually get a meaningful print? So the idea here is any compared to theirs, uh, for the for the mold part, you can probably do most plastics with that. I, I've never tried it, but the point is that with us, you can print freeform what they do in a mold. That's the idea. It's going to be slower because you got only that... that mm -hmm. 20 pounds per day extrusion rate with one nozzle, which you can scale to say 180 if you got a nine-headed hydra on that, which I would suggest like if if we have the interest in that or energy for it, we can do multiple heads. First of all, get the thing that we have now working, multiple heads. So do do two heads. Run it off the same same driver even. Two heads in series, same driver. 
You can do the high temperature chamber, which would be two good things to do right now. We can, we can do that as people finish up the other axes. I would definitely get into it. You can use trim coil that's four foot wide. That would be perfect. So weld up a frame, um, which I actually would, would propose that. We, we start working on a heat chamber so What's because that's door? revolutionary. Trim coil is just like aluminum or steel trim that you get at Menards for houses that you can use as the surface. So the idea was a frame, um, thin layer of metal, insulation in between, fiberglass. Works fine. We've got rolls of fiberglass in the house. Uh, we could. Uh, we don't have that trim, four foot wide trim coil. The, the bed we're using there right now is three by three, so four would actually be perfect to fit around it. For, uh, for basically like a four by four frame around that that we can use. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And halogen lamps for the heating. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Put like four on the bottom, and that gets you. That's one thousand watts right there. Mm -hmm. So, uh, or is so it five? Don't that's five hundred only. But heat the I think bed from inside. We just. Well, it's under the bed. They're in, under the bed. In the bed. Or, yeah. So or if you just have the. Actually, put them on the floor under the. No, no, that's too far. That's too far. Radiates uh, too much volume there. But you put them. So you got your two rods from the Z axis. You put your put a metal plate on that. Like this guy, I guess. Yeah, yeah, it's like that. Um, put a thin plate. That could even be like the trim coil that you just, or maybe like put an X across it. Put a enough structure that you can hold your lamps on and put the the bed that we have right now just right on top of that mm -hmm. maybe with some spacers or so so that's a uh, that's pretty simple we can get that going uh, the thing that um, yeah we've got the PEI the PEI comes in one by two foot sections we can glue that on and have this huge printing surface that we can use now or for future projects mm -hmm. so that actually the PEI came in today so we can paste that up with uh, double-sided adhesive tape mm -hmm. um, so that would be cool, but, but let's, let's take a look at this. The, the filament maker shredder, this is trillion dollars, worth trillion dollars upon success, and you get it for only $559. My God, your My God. is amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> and it's, it would be used, the explicit intent is printing things like wall panels for this with a slightly higher printer in a slightly larger workshop on the next pad, but over. Mm -hmm. You can print your towers, your, your pond, uh, pond lumber and all that, which there, that in that picture right now is kind of pretty much crumbling. It's in an old greenhouse, but that's just wood. Um, now, but let's look at the schedule though. So the schedule was the large 3D printer build for three days and three days of full metal printer, which means attaching a MIG welder head to the gantry. Well, we don't have a finished gantry. We got to finish a gantry. Um, and then CNC torch table, which gets you the blades for the filament, the plastic shredders. The filament makers are simple. They're one inch tubes, auger bits, inside of them heater bands, and the universal controller. Uh, Shredder gets into the easiest way to implement it take two hydraulic motors, counter rotating, with fat blades and like one or two inch, two inch shafts, and you got some industrial power, like thousands of pounds per day shredding power. For that, we need a little torch table. So that's where the torch table is before the plastic shredder I would put the full metal printer after the the shredder before the flurry because uh, the full metal printer is cool however it's not we can do take us three days to do that either it's which gonna, one the the torch table like we basically just have to attach the head uh, right? if we use the same axis but yeah, if you want to like so if we want to do that we can but uh, we have that other frame and I would suggest do, keeping this printer going as let's make this go industrial, let's not take it apart and then it's try to do, rocks. we need like the torch table and printing, like we need that all the time. So we have that other black frame that's I sitting above the stove there. Mm -hmm. We could put the axes on that, but for that we would need to, to make more axes. We need to make yeah, three axes. I get that. Um, but is it really... Um, for the tor adding wait, the torch head, once we have a gantry, oh, you just add it on. Yeah, and can't we just it. unbolt yeah. the, the plastic head and put that on and do our cuts and then take it off? And you can do a bit of that, but once you, if you do like any longer prints, uh, that heat will travel and start melting your parts. Uh, yeah, so you have I get to, that. I just think you can do it for an experiment. Yeah, we could do that. And can, do we do it enough to cut our blades? Because uh, that's a lot of onboarding. 
Yeah, we could. Just so that we can get our blades. We could so do it. That we can, it feels a little backwards. I know it would be awesome to have the CNC table going here and have that. Well, whole what we can, can do is we can print more parts. So if we have any time, spare time, uh, we can actually assemble more axes and try to work out the bugs of what was yeah. difficult in the. I but yes, be, we can do the. We can hang the. I would be torch. super happy to, like, as we have more time in my time here to put it into building more rails and like yeah. everything and getting that going. But it seems to me like that is the clincher right there. Which Do, part? The doing, metal? Doing the shredder. Shredder. Yeah, yeah. Shredder is like that's. The I, I agree. Highest I agree. Prop right there. And shredding is not as. Uh, that's going to be easier than the filament maker. Because yeah. shredder, you got these big blades, you got a power cube and two motors, you yeah, cannot it's fail. Pretty, yeah. 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 I would quote you on that. It cannot yeah. fail. It cannot <laughs> fail. It's like we've got the power. Yeah. We've got the geometry of the blades. We you do. We mount you have up. all that. Yeah, so we've got files there. for that and stuff like that. You just scale up. Um, you, know, you know they function well. Yeah. The size pieces uh, that so so need. look at. Yeah, I mean the blades. Look at the the precious plastic shredder we just take their blades and turn them instead of quarter inch make them half inch because we actually want to grind cars with it later <laughs> we do um precious plastic shredder golf carts okay. i was like i was like can you put it in front of a uh you know one of those uh, tractor attached or something you use it as a rotiller yeah so look at this dog here um this thing I mean, this Let's CAD is available in the free CAD. They've easy. got this that blade yeah, geometry we there. Able to do this. Um, that's available. That there's free CAD files for that there. So we've got to cut. Those yeah, still the same. Yeah, we gotta so do a thing points. like this with a bunch of these blades, like. So that's a lot of cutting. Yeah. Okay. Now I get more. Yeah. So it's cut. like that's we'll, a bit. We'll I mean, you can do. Okay. I mean, look at this right there. That's actually the profile of those blades. That's they're not too too difficult. I mean. Right? So, I mean, you can put half the teeth and double up the speed of the motors. You, we have that option. So, so you can make a... Is it crazy to propose this? Can we, can we like do one... Blade? Yeah, that is just like, like that we can use as a guide for yeah. freehand cutting you can. the rest. You can. With the torch. Right? With the torch. You can. Is that Walker's idea? No. We've got three torches. Uh -huh. oh. How what? many do we need? Well, a boatload. Oh, you just like straight up melt the plastic right off the versus sh shredding it. Use torch. No, we're ta we're talking about one, yeah. make it slightly smaller so you can use it as the guide so that when you pull your tip around the shape of Mm -hmm. Well, they've got 48 blades in this one, but we can do 24 and it would work really well. 12 and 12, because these are half inch. Um, I guess we can see how fast we can, because it's not that thick, I mean, right? How thick? It's half inch? Half inch. Oh, it is, okay. Well, this here is quarter. That's quarter, yeah. We're uh, going to do it out of half. We want to do half. Okay. We want to do a little more serious than that, because we've got the power. Here they've got like... I'd like to get a bit of learning experience out of it, not just <laughs> to monkey work out of it. Yeah. Well, I mean, yes, we could, but um, well, I'm, I'm just the questions in the time I mean, budget. What's, how much, keep in mind, though, yeah. what's what's the the time to get together the cutting table to get yeah, it done? Yeah, I mean, the torch table is a bit like a plotter, right? I mean, it's just we have just X, Y, and these these guys are pretty just X, Y. We have the head already. It's sitting on the on the stove there. We do. Okay, yeah. that's good to know. And do we have to have it's like a couple of days? A different type of. It's going to be a couple of days to. Put it all together, yeah. like as in, because we've got auto. I mean, on the what we have on that head right now is auto gas feed. You can just trigger it manually, get rid of the auto mm -hmm. gas solenoids, and just do a. I mean, I've done a torch table back in like 2000, like seven or eight, where it's just the head, and I would just trigger it manually. Yeah. Or actually, just keep it on, and it just cuts. Yeah. You can do that totally. pretty simply. I mean, yeah. that's literally you got that head, you got a gantry. You duct tape the no, pipe yeah, strap yeah, them yeah. together. <laughs> That's all. Uh, so that kind of experiment, I mean, we can go with that. That's uh, you know, that's easier than doing it by hand. And we, if we have a working gantry, uh, but you got to keep it up off the like 
maybe you know lower it, put like a heat shroud around it so that you're not melting your plastic up there. I mean, uh -huh. you're gonna start melting that. So, um, but yeah, just lower it by about 12 inches. The idea there was we had the water bed there, uh, that big table there is actually a water bed. We could fill that bed. with water, yeah. and then things won't get uh -huh. nearly as hot as. So we to need. pull that up, we need to make more um, rails. We need to finish the ones we have right now. Yeah. We don't, haven't even run those. We don't know if they work. I mean, okay. we got to run that all. And, so, and the, 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 um, we did the Z. The, where Z is actually moving right now. The so. carriage. Sorry for the cutting table, though. The carriage. Um, it, the seat, um, That's a torch. Right? The torch table. Mm -hmm. um, does that work as with the sure. plastic 3D printed we'll take a look at um, um, carriages, or do we need to have a no, it would work. It would work as long as we keep the hot head away from the plastic. Yeah. Okay. Or you just use the water bed. So we have a four by four foot water bed yeah, right so now. You saw that. It, yeah. We fill that with water, and you get much less the heat issue. The, okay. the water will absorb a lot of it. And you just so lay it on. Lay it on right on, on a surface. Uh, if you've got a bar this is of a pretty steel, big which like the two half by eight, which we could use as stock, uh, you lay it on the rim, so the chunky. bottom is touching the water, or it's even a little bit above the water, and then when you cut, it splashes onto it and make it cools these, it. Okay. Uh, so maybe double herringbone, so torch table, you don't necessarily have to lay it in the water, you can be above it, and the splash from the And make it larger, so talking about two inches, more like four inches. Uh, and then and possibly uh, how long does it take for the, on uh, each side? The, so yeah, we can do another thing as well. The, uh, just to build up the challenge the, here is the print head itself. Okay, can we do the, this uh, using lower cost um, methods? Well, I guess the, the cutter or the wham for this wire car headed in the wham tray. Yeah, that's called a welder. You mount it to to the gantry. That's the MIG welder we have. Just you mount it. Like an existing, like an existing uh, print, we might be able to do this. Yes. You know, to it yeah. And keep all the other stuff. Yeah, the, the, the guns we have. It's on basically the, that instead of on the other side. Your head, you're just put positioning that. So you're just taking like a plumber and you would use any sort of third party welding system that's out there well, and connected. Four, six, eight, ten, twelve, eleven. We could use various third party appliances to do this, or we can use what we have right here. Quite a bit there. And oh, that's why. That's what those guys. That's why there's another thing. In right? Belgium, yeah, did yeah, that's kind of like that. You're plotting plates. instead. Instead, you're cutting though, because you got the of, cutting head. One of these plates. Now we're looking. But at the doing secret sauce is the gantry, so a nice working gantry. So we, uh, the first step to anything is exactly. getting those gantries working. And gantry being the the, 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 the the Gantry meaning the X X with Y. So, sorry, y, y axis with the X axis in between. The Z is already working. For the torch table, we don't. Uh, we actually do have a Z axis, but we carry it like right on the head. It, the head moves up and down for the torch because that's an easy way to do it. Yeah. Millimeter. And, and that's necessary for the. Uh, under two inches, but about one and three quarter inch. I mean, for the metal. Uh, for the shred, yeah. the metal printhead. That's about what I need. That's just for the CNC. You look at the individual blades. Paint. It's just for making the shredder. Well, it's not just for making. No, but what, what's the, the question? Um, yeah, what are you talking about? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, uh, what's, uh, what are you asking? Or so. uh, do we need the gantry uh, to create the, the um, teeth. Are they the same? The the metal. Um, yes, gantry is required. Gantry is the motion system. So there's a bunch of. On one side it's more more teeth, on the other side it's less teeth. Yes. Yes. The moving piece, the head of the. The gantry. The way it's configured, you're saying between having the x axis between the the y. The gantry is just a name for where you put the extruder or you put anything else. The thing moving about. Starting at just one, two, three, or additive manufacturing. That's the gantry. Gantry is what that means is one minute. Thirteen. Thirteen. Picture. Six teeth. Oh, this let's look at the. Uh, you can take a look at this file. You can open it up in FreeCAD. And import it as a step file. Under Universal yes, Access, yeah, you've got pictures of all solid. kinds of gantries here. And for us, we're going to do some. So the gantry, what is that? Up high, larger things like, say, PVC pipes. The gantry is. That could be like six inches. Um, I think we're going to benefit from the larger uh, half inch, half inch blades, uh, just to be more scalable at this point. Okay.
here is like a good that's a called a gantry you can yeah there so that's a gantry so that, look at this little video that's welcome the to the 3d printer we can construction do. set workshop where you will learn to build a 3d printer of any size you can make it any lens or the gantry is the two long axes and and the one in between that the xy motion system part and to that end that model or that design building it that way um allows you to pretty much do anything mm -hmm. you know, with that style mm -hmm. So. Yeah, it's flexible. You can arrange the X, Y, and Z in any kind of configuration where that you can have the Z moving up and down. You can have uh, the X axis with the Z actually mounted on top of that for like a torch or well wire arc additive manufacturing. So it's just a universal construction set in the X, Y, Z direction. So just three-dimensional uh, CNC construction set. Well, that, that, that sounds great. Just, I mean, you, you may know this already, but I was, you know, encouraged um i was you know told that the uh well, i guess the, the hedonites uh if i'm not mistaken the mennonites hederites 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 uh you know they start their intentional community like seven years ago in the area and because they you know they're very technology uh, you know, of technology um they pretty much built their own like cement uh, factory, their sure. own CNC, you know, milling, like fabricate their own tools, and, mm -hmm. and they fabricate, you know, jobs and do cement jobs all in the community, and seemingly are, are doing very well for themselves. Um, so, I, I mean, haven't heard about the CNC part. I've heard about the other parts, but the, yeah, you mean the the cement part? Yeah. No CNC. Like oh. I didn't know that anyone in the intentional communities like that had CNCs. Yeah, yeah, like they that. they seemingly do, in in the you know okay. built a lot of custom tooling as well um, for you know all types of different jobs. But yeah, but yeah, so I, you know these types of things are very you know encouraging or inspiring to know that you know there's versions of what we have that in one unit you can just possibly replicate it and swap things out and have production lines. You know, for yeah, that's the nature of the construction set approach. That's that's what we want to do because it gives you. 10x or 100x or 1000x the flexibility. Yeah. Awesome. So, where? Well, starting, we got to do. <laughs> got to do the axis. Make the axis work. Uh -huh. uh, I would want to do like I'd be into doing a high temperature chamber because that's that means yeah. more yeah, right molding. Uh -huh. Yeah. We get the trim, the 40 inch trim coil, 40 inch wide. Put it around it, and that in itself is a major proof of concept for for the world if we mm -hmm. if we do that. Yeah. So, and yeah. Perhaps so torch and then shredder. Is that? Uh, uh, yeah, I would do torch and shredder and a filament maker after that. So no bed. We're not gonna do the bed now. Bed. Oh yeah, yeah, we need that. That's yeah. We bought. Bed. Yeah. 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 Make the we gotta do the bed. Uh -huh. We gotta. Yeah. yeah. We will, yeah. Yeah, so a bunch of people get on the axes, make them work. Hampus knows the wiring and all that. We can wire up the Ys. We already are moving the four Z axes. Uh, the only thing I noticed, like when I press down on one of them, I could press it down with minimal amount of force, like 10 pounds or 20 pounds. I was expecting 50 or 70. So uh, we we'll want to just verify, do we have a 24 volt power supply of maybe 12 for the power elements there? Or we might want to add another one and add another 24 volt power supply because maybe like that six volts that's getting six times four axes that might be pushing the limits of what that those motors need. So we might need two power supplies. And the bed and the printing is going to add a considerable weight. That's yeah, that's what I'm involves. saying. Like, I was trying to test it because it was moving up. Like, when you were there, that's 10 pounds for one engine. So for one, I was doing one. And you were stopping it. 40 pounds. So it's like. That didn't sound right. Maybe, uh, and the only thing I can trace that to was the power supply. Maybe only 12 volts. Um, How do we do that? The, easily? Well, you look at the power supply. What it say on it? it says, yeah. um, so that part, first check it. Well, I can I can go in there check it. It's, it's, is it 24? And then we maybe do the test again. To start moving it and actually measure it like with our force gauge like what are we getting exactly for each motor that would be good data points as a start and we say okay is that sufficient if it's 20 pounds each uh, that's 80 pounds the bed is like 55 so that might even be enough and otherwise we, we probably want to divide into two 
stepper drivers with two power supplies because mm. maybe we're just pushing the limits of the single power supply already. So we might need two power supplies for the C axis, one power supply for the X and Y. Or oh yeah, X right. Because we're we're still uh, we're sucking all that power. <coughs> well, it's only like three amps. So that power supply has the amps, but it does not have the voltage for at least for the four Zs. It looks like right now because it's dividing them it's in series so each motor is getting six volts yeah this and we said very... the motor specs were like six volts mm -hmm. like 6.8 volts in fact so we might be a little too low just marginally too low there so we might just need to divide it into two power supplies but we should get the data okay on, w on one power supply this is how much force we're getting because they definitely move up and no problem but what what exactly do we have so it's data collection can you wire power supplies in series? I mean, series? No, you yes. cannot do those. Uh, okay, okay. Those are uh, yeah, okay. Uh, switching power supplies. They don't work. You blow them up if you do that. Okay. So, we tried. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I mean, yeah. well, I gotta try it. I mean, yes, yeah. because you don't know what's inside. Yeah, like, even if the specs say and it's, it's forbidden, I would still try it because yeah, they don't know. yeah, they don't know. They don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> So, okay, so axes, finish them, get some data on the Z axes. Um, so let's, let's troubleshoot, I mean, the motion, that's, that's the first thing. Let's get the motion, make sure we've got that 68 theoretical pounds per motor. So we should be able to hang down like 40, 50 pounds on a, each motor, which is like, you know, hanging down quite a bit on it. Um, and that things still should be moving per motor. Like a person should stand on that axis like one light person out of us here should stand on a bed and you can still lift them yeah that's okay i don't see how those belts are going to hold that can we those just belts move back are... to the metal inner ones because they're stronger right they, okay, they actually look stronger going? I don't know. you could do but are they going to get like start crossing yeah, I, have no idea about the I mean crossing? stick to what we have crossing like i mean they might I don't know, cross each other, well, like jump on top of each other on a oh, pulley? You need to tension both, both of them, them equal yeah. to oh, most. I think yeah. I missed that. Could both put like two. No, I, be, I would just put them. No, but I mean, let's let's keep to these. There's, I mean, if you pull them, I mean, you can't break them apart. It's just... Uh, they give or...? They, uh, I mean, they, they don't have the metal bands in. They, they have like nylon reinforcement in them. And they should be like 50 pounds working strength. Uh, that's kind of like when I was looking it up, it should be 50 pounds working strength, so it still should be okay. You should still be able to pull like, and we could maybe get a data point, like use our scale. And that scale is only up to like 50 pounds or so, but that should be able to tell us, well, can the belts easily hold that, for one, I mean, they better. Yeah, I mean, you can't, I don't think you can break those belts, but they, they do feel a little weak to me. Anyway, like when we put the the belt peg, the belt cylinder in, and the bolt just really uh, abraded against the belt. It just broke. The belt broke right out uh, when we try to tension it. So um, you gotta be careful how you mount the bolt in it. You can't like scrape off. Just actually break through the the belt because it's not like the steel belt. Oh, sorry, the steel belt. The steel belt that doesn't break, but it's these ones do. Like if you push it, if you push it the bolt in there into the belt cylinder too hard, it just like breaks the belt. You can imagine that. Yeah, that's metal against rubber. Yeah. So, okay, so axes, and then as soon as we shake down the axes force, we go to the uh, heat chamber. Now, what what do we do? Like, uh, how much time do we allow ourselves? Because so we've got a time budget of it's what is it? We've got the fourth. Um, ben, when are you leaving? Um, well, I'm somewhere between the 16th and the 20th, probably. Mm -hmm. um, right. Um, yeah, but I mean, I, I paid to then come back for the, what, the 3D print product development. It's not gonna work. My family has too much for the kiddos, so mm -hmm. I might stay a little longer. Sure. Um, yeah. Yep. And Holger, well, you, you're you until the 16th. 18. Yeah, I might stay through the 18th. 18. So I think 18 is the. 18 for you. 
Yeah, I think my flight goes in the 16s or 17s. Okay, so, uh huh. And Christian, you're 22nd now. 18. You're 18? Mm -hmm. Holy cow. Everyone's leaving. It's getting thin on the ground. Thin. It's getting thin. Um, as far as the. Okay, so on the. No, just for the enterprise people here, man, like, uh, I wanted to do stuff on, like, construction documents that we submit to the engineer that's what we wanted to work on like get all the stuff from all the different wiki pages we've got a lot of the design already we gotta just put a put it into a booklet like a one document okay here's the foundation here's the walls how we're doing it all that like we wanted to be doing that are you guys up for that or because we were su supposed to do it at 5 30. like yeah not terribly up for it <laughs> Not terribly up for it. No. Um. Well, it depends. Like, I, I what I want to do, because uh, I'm going to be here for another six weeks after they leave. Right. And I feel like it's it's really important that we can put as much time as possible in in the workshop. Yeah. And like right now we don't have any food. None of us have a car. Uh, and like we need we need to solve the food situation. Uh, to keep those energies up, because as it is now. Just it doesn't work. It's it's not at all efficient to scramble. For literally, stuff. be hungry all the time, which is my case. Um, if we get like dinner from other places between, I mean, the only options are El Maguey. There's the Tak, the RV park. Chinese. Chinese. There's outside cafe, five minutes that way. There's old five minutes that way. There's Gary Ray's, five minutes that way. The who? So, past the minutes, we'll take a right when you get to the city center. I'll drive another four or five minutes. There's some one place called Gallery Race. There's some second place called the Old Cook Stove. Yeah. And then that, so this is like that five direction towards Ostborn, <laughs> it has a place called Gallery Race where they make cheeseburgers. Uh, can all these plates, can we do like one person just go, we just make an order and we get, get it for everybody or something? Well, that's the case, like how. I would suggest on your end to simply get yeah, get, get Jeff, yes. Yeah, to get, get Jeff to, to pick it up and, and just and get yeah. And basically, like we would need it, we need to do some grocery shopping once a week to have breakfast supplies. We need a lunch at twelve, and then another meal at uh, six, yes. And if we have that, we're pretty much set to just. Cool. We would be so much more productive. Like double as much yeah. productive. Yeah, that has a big impact. Yeah, it's just I don't want to have to worry about it. I just want to be tired right. because I worked hard, not because I'm hungry and I can't go any further. Basically. So we've got those five places we we named. Um, food. I put them in the chat. Yeah, go ahead. Put them in a the chat. Food. We'll just get get Jeff pick stuff up. Um, So we tried with the, the Mennonites uh, here that we knew. They were like, no, too busy now. Um, one person that we we had got coming, they were going to assist with food. They never heard of him like two weeks before Summer X started. As far as, I mean, I don't know. I'm kind of out of ideas here because we're in the middle of nowhere and there's not, not a good place. So, yeah. so Gary Ray's, they mostly like, I don't know if they completely close when the temperature falls, but they have considerably less to do when summer's over. Mm-hmm. Uh, since they're not Mennonites, they might not be on, you know, tractor farm duty or whatever else is happening. So that's one uh, alternative to call it. And the Outlook Cafe as well, a non Mennonites. Uh, uh, would, would Subway do or no? Sure. 
once a week, absolutely, every day it would be kind of tough. <laughs> well, yeah. Just go vegan. Once, yeah. Just go breatharian like me. <laughs> What'd you call it? Breatharian. Breatharian. Yeah, I mean, that's a thing. That's how you do it. Yeah, he's. That's that, a way, thing. The, the, way, the way I saw you scoff down that pasta, I, I doubt you could uh, ever be repertorian. Damn it. Yeah, All know, right. We got you on camera, man. <laughs> right. Or you install, like, a big sloth container, like in the Matrix, that just, like, <laughs> disseminates, like, basic nutrients, and we're fine. Yeah. Like, that works too. Spam, but do it. <laughs> Chinese in Cameron, El Maguey, and what else in Cameron was there? Was there anything? I mean, they have um, Taco Bell, KFC. Oh yes, Taco oh, Bell, so. Taco Bell, baby, I love yeah, it. I love it. Sonic Burgers. Too. Yeah. Would Would you guys eat Taco Bell? Yeah, but I need about three or four of those. Yeah, yeah. Like. <laughs> Once in a while. Once, once a week. Once every two weeks. <laughs> That's kind of the. Then you gotta kind of cleanse your body and stuff. Yeah. Love it. I eat like farm to table, all organic, like. Um. Yeah. And then, and then, uh, two, four, six, seven. Yeah. Done. I'm like, I've, I've gone down the rabbit hole here. Um, okay. Okay, but uh, that doesn't prevent the idea that we still got to build. Uh, still want to do that build in December. I still want to do like. Can you guys uh, continue working at 5:30? I mean, I'll be there till 5:30 in the shop, providing technical support of various kinds, yep. and then cut out for the. We got to prepare those documents and stuff like that. Yep. So, the documents um, for for the engineer, so we can submit to the the talking about the house for the house for the CD go home. We're snapping up the lot, the the lot we uh, we took a look at, and uh, we got to move. I mean, we got to prove the model. Prove the model that people can build effectively and and actually provide needs. So, uh, and that as far as the timing of that, ideally, like yeah, we could be actually breaking ground there early December. But mm -hmm. that's the plan. That according to the uh, the current schedule, we're still there, uh, pending any stuff like lots not buildable or something. I mean, we're gonna get the lot put on, under contract, and uh, if we find that. We cannot build what we want to build. We will back out. But other than that, right now it's go. I mean, I, we don't see anything else in a way right now. So, mm -hmm. yep. That's boogie. That's boogie. Boogie, boogie, boogie.